ready when you are. Oh, oh, that's right. It is my turn. Isn't it? <laughs> Wait, I'm like, it's, no, it's... that's the intro right there. That's it. <laughs> it's just an awkward, <laughs> an awkward silence. <laughs> Welcome back to game silence Devs of all of us looking at each other. <laughs> Welcome back to Game Devs Play Games, guys, where we're still playing uh, Song of Seven, Chapter One, Chapter One. Uh, oh, she's so creepy. She is so creepy. She's kind of creepy. I mean, just look at her standing there, like, like, uh. Uh, hey, a you know, it's Emma? funny because I, hey. for the longest time, didn't have her standing at that fence waiting for him. But then I'm like, well, it kind of makes sense that she's standing there waiting for him because that's yeah, yeah. Because then sometimes the players would get out of here and then they'd be like, wait, what was where am I going? What am I? And then when I see her now, it's just like, oh, she's right there. Uh, I, and it only makes sense for her to be standing there. Like, if she was like halfway through the fence being like, hey, it'd be like, well, this is, you're a little crazy, first of she all. She does mention that she has been, you know, checking things out over the course of time. Hmm. That's there's true. A, there's She's... a dialogue option coming up soon that I want to take advantage of. Is there? Oh yeah. Oh, it's did great. You, did you do the? I did it. Oh yeah. First thing, because I'm, <gasps> oh, yeah. I'm that guy. I'm that guy that always. I, I okay. Yeah. Let's let's get to that. All right. So basically, actually, do you, I want to? Can I talk about this scene for a second? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So for the longest time, I hated this scene because when he got when they got back or when they started talking. Um, you know, she was basically being a know-it-all. And there was no time for... Because I felt like Kiba at this point would kind of be like, listen, you know, like, you don't know everything. Oh, so I was, I was like, you know, you don't, do that. You know we don't, you don't know everything. <laughs> and you really got me in trouble. And, and I wanted there to be a more genuine moment there. And I pushed for it for months and months and months. And finally... Uh, we had some playtesters call her a bee. <laughs> so then I was like, I, I told uh, Jenny, our writer, and I'm like, see, see, she's being a bee. All right. <laughs> and I'm like, I really, okay. And she's like, well, do you want her, do you want me to pull her back or do you want, and I was like, I really think that Kiba needs to stand up for himself here. You know, I think he mm. should stand forward and be like, hey, listen, you know, I'm a person too. I'm not an idiot and you don't know everything. And I, yeah, so... I was much happier with that scene. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the question that was just asked on here was, um, are, are we going to go? And uh, I, you tested it too? I, I did not because I was like, well, obviously that's the whole point of the game. Well, uh, I'm that guy. So go ahead and click at it. I'm going to stay here. After all that adventure, I'm going to stay here. Kiba has a mediocre <laughs> little life in his tiny little village. <laughs> He thinks about his days beyond the fence often, and sometimes thinks about what he would what would have happened had he ventured out again. He takes over as village leader after his father's death, not from lung fever, and watches every day pass like the ones before. Years after year, he exists, but not. Uh, but that's not really a uh, a life, is it? Next time, live a little. <laughs> and game over. See, and that's exactly what I, I was like. It, this this might happen, and it was like, I don't I don't have a lot of time. I just I most games would be like you'd be like, no, I'm gonna stay here, and it'd be like, yeah, but do you really want to? And it would just give you the same exact dialogue option. You'd be like, no, I'm gonna stay here. Be like, yeah, but do you really want? Fine, okay, I guess I'll go. But this time I was like, no, I've got. I'm gonna see what happens. <laughs> I I appreciate that though. It kind of reminds me of uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was made by Chair. Um, and I think it was it, it was an adventure game, and it starts off with you uh, nice. right there. Yep. Good, good point to save, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but it starts. I didn't off... want it to be like crazy and annoying. Have to go yeah, through yeah. All the dialogue yeah. over again. Yeah, because yeah. you know that some players are going to test that, yep. and they're going to be like, "All right." I didn't want to super punish them for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but in this game that Cherry made, it, it was like it was kind of an adventure. You're you're with this couple, and you get out of a car, and like you find yourself in front of a military base in the middle of the woods. And they uh, they start attacking you. They capture your girlfriend, and so then it's like, okay, now the story is that I need to go venture into this military base and rescue her. But you can go back outside, up through the caves, and back to the car and leave. And then it's game over, and it's done. That's awesome. I was like, oh my god, this is that's awesome, unexpected and amazing. That's how I play Fire Emblem. <laughs> people die. That's it. Sometimes that's people it. just die. Well, tough luck awesome <laughs> going up the mountainside so i i got really excited about this because i saw kind of like some snippets of this scene in uh like the trailer or like screenshots and maybe the kickstarter i don't remember no definitely not press the kickstarter e. uh, huh press e 
Well, not against her. I was more I, whatever. I, 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 I was just more. There's like, nothing. Like, that's there's glowing. nothing you can click on, so you just keep I going. I like that waterfall though. It is. Yeah. See, it was that water. Like, what if I looked and I was like, oh, maybe I have to click on the waterfall. <laughs> that's fair. Just takes away from the scene. So you can see the beautiful mountains again. I, I never got a chance to ask you um, about your Kickstarter experience. I know that we talked a little bit about some of the backer yeah. rewards. But you, your Kickstarter goal was eight thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and you made it. Yep. And obviously, you had been working on this game prior to the Kickstarter. So yes. how? I mean, you don't have to go into like the nitty gritty of like where you spent that money, but like eight thousand dollars is nothing as far as game development is concerned. How oh, did yeah. you make that work? I'm a very simple person. <laughs> <laughs> um, I. I just spent it as wisely and as efficiently as I possibly could. And right. you, you finished the Kickstarter in, like, mid-March, was yes. it? Yes, yes. It was, like, the end of March, maybe? I and actually so don't remember anymore. This, it was the end of March. This game released, or Chapter 1 released in... Like, a week ago. A week ago, which 17th. was... 17th. So that, that's about two months of development, right? Of in, Until you kind of, like... Wait, before the Kickstarter? Post, after after the Kickstarter. Oh, how much did we work on the game after the Kickstarter? Yeah. Oh, a year and a half. Oh, this was a year ago. The Kickstarter was eight thousand dollars over a year and in, yeah. in, in two months. Yeah. How did you live? <laughs> I didn't. Oh. That's, that's <laughs> I mean, I also I know I also teach. I, I do have a part time job as a teacher. You yeah. Know? Um, but I also have a four year old son, so I made this game around a four year old son as well. Well, he was well. Three and then four. That's insane, man. Like, it is. I can't even imagine working on like a three-month game with all that going. Like, oh, I mean, you and I are working on what should have been a three-month game, yeah. and we don't even have a child to take care of at the same time. It's hard. Well, you do have to take care of me, but I mean, it got it got to the point sometimes where he'd be like, my son Oliver would be like, "Oh, is that a? Are you walking?" Uh, I clicked her. Mm. <laughs> Whoopsie doopsie. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and cut back to us fixing this. Something that we're uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of things that we'd like to like to do in chapter two. But one of them we're gonna add facial bones. Ooh, Ooh. yeah. We're I, not gonna do like you know like mouth you know movements or whatever mm-hmm. like that. I mean you'll be able to open the jaw, so it'll be more because I want to have more expression. Like one issue with Emma is that she has. Um, are we? No, we're not. We, we can oh. we can come back. Yeah, right. it's it's good at this point. Are we back in now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. and now we're back. Uh, but you don't know that. <laughs> or do you? Now, now we have to cut again. See. Uh, yeah. So Emma had this. Um, I don't know how to say this properly, but uh, resting bitch face. Yeah, yeah. No, that's sounds about right. And it was, it was got. But once you get the character rigged and skinned and start, you get some animations. You're like, we can't undo the skinning. <laughs> And redo her animation. You know what I mean? It's like you have to. You're just like, well, I, I try to use the bones to the best of my abilities to make her not mm-hmm. look as bad. But that was that was really annoying. <laughs> it's almost as if you got stuck inside her. Yeah. And then Awkward. It. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, it must have been like wherever I, I s- s- was when I, yeah. I clicked her. So this was the part that I was like, bah, because now you are controlling Emma. And look at this. Not only do you have the equipment that uh, Kiba just found, but you also have a few other items. Yeah, and that, I think that's what blew my mind the most, because I was like, okay, I'm, I'm controlling another character, but I was like, wait, she has a whole other inventory. I mean, it makes sense, but it's like, now I, I kind of understand her a little bit better. And I'm like, but there's potential here. What could this mean for the future? Yep. Yeah, I, I, that's something I, that we're I mean, gonna that. we're gonna play around with a lot. That's right. You need to shape that fabric. Shape that fabric. Our audio guy, I, I love all the little sound effects, oh, and the yeah. little cutscenes and stuff like that. Just to like very satisfying. It's a it's a wonderful solution. Instead of me, our, me animating her like doing mm-hmm. that, it's like mm-hmm. you can use your imagination and. Actually, could you talk a little bit about kind of like the team dynamics uh, for everyone that worked on this game? Because obviously, like you're the like. You're the director, right? You're the right. guy that like makes sure every all the pieces fall into place. But only like... three of us have been here from the beginning. Okay. Um, uh, three of them, actually, four. The remaining four came on after the kick, or like around the Kickstarter or after. Oh, okay. So the three of us, um, 
And we had some people, anyone who's worked in a game ever or worked on a big project, you know that you're gonna have some people come and go. You know, it's finding your people and finding the people that are gonna stick around. Cause this, I mean, it's a massive undertaking to <laughs> build something over the course of years. Yeah, and absolutely. find the right people that are, you know, you have to have to be very dedicated. And I mean, it's, you gotta make sacrifices. You can't just kind of casually do this. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta like really get into it. Um, and so finding those people. So anyway, we have, I do all of the, the logic. So I, I basically build everything um, as far as like things happening. Mm -hmm. I do most of the animations. Um, I do the, all the concept art and all the design. And the fun stuff. So, yeah, I, yeah. So are basically the other people on the team kind of there to kind of like support? Like you have another animator that works with you. Yeah, he he helped me with all the animations I didn't want to. <laughs> no, he yeah he he helped out. He did some a few animations here and there. Like he did all the the run and walk cycles. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Things that like would have taken me longer. Um. Because it was like, he, he made that his focus. Yeah, well, it's especially, it's like, that's the animation that players are going to be seeing the most. Right. So it's the most important to get exactly right. Yes, and he went through many versions. Um, even in our original trailer, we had a lot of complaints about our, our run cycle, so we were like, okay, 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 we'll make it better. Um, and then you have, have a, another programmer that works with you, right? Yes. So uh, Andy um, is our programmer, um, but he doesn't... Uh, we use all, like, I do all the visual logic, like blueprinting oh, okay. and stuff. So, um, but I mean, there's a lot of code that, you know, that he's helped us out with. And So did you write, like, the, sh I guess, is it like a shader that's kind of got that, like, post effect over everything? Yeah, so um, there's a few, there's only, there's a few post effects, like um, AO, and um, we use this awesome one that we learned about from Fire the Firewatch team hmm. um, called Amplify Color. So what we're able to do is we take a screenshot of our scene and we can import it, like we, it connects to Photoshop, imports to Photoshop, and then we can do color correction oh. in Photoshop. And then we, it's an LUT file. It saves that color correction or changing levels or whatever, comes back into the end of the engine and then it's on top of the camera. So everywhere you look in that scene has that color correction. Wow. That's pretty impressive. It's amazing. And it's, it's really, wow. it's super lightweight too. It's not like a crazy post-processing stuff. Yeah. It's it's really lightweight and it's, um, you know, gives you that extra that little boost of control over the color. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a color obsessive <laughs> person, but that's good though. Like, there's a lot of games that just like throw vibrant colors all over the place mm -hmm. and it just feels like a mess. Here, it actually is like it's got charm to it. Like, it's got flavor and and yep. it makes sense. So I also do all the team management, like I communicate with everyone and mm -hmm. get everyone on board and, you know, so I have a lot of private messages with all seven members all the time. That's a lot of fun. I mean, we do have a group chat on, we use this program called Telegram. Okay. Which is really nice, but I end up having a lot of private conversations as well. Um, but then we have Jenny, our writer, and she does all the, uh, a lot of the dialogue and uh, the story arcs. And then we have uh, Zach, who is my business partner, and he's our sort of uh, the CSO. So he does all of our, our money management and our marketing. Mm -hmm. um, he was kind of the producer in the beginning, but he his skills are much, much, I'm more of the producer as well. Managing all the different people, which is really fun. A lot of fun, I imagine, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, the first this. time, we're, we're just about out of time here, but I do want to point out the first time that I got through this, or got to this area, I realized, like, it, it was when I was looking at the stone slab to figure out what characters represented what notes. Yeah, you, you, it's pretty easy to kind of figure out, like, oh, this is in the same, like, the vertical order. Yep, and then it connects, like, you're trying to figure out what you need to play. Notice the camera to angle, too. Mm -hmm. Yep, how you can see both of them, very important. And then you also notice the bird, yep. and then you can hear the bird along the same, going along at the same time as the music, and it's the same four notes just over and over again. And that's when it clicks that the stage is telling you what you need to do. Or the symbol we put the symbol of the liar. Yeah, you on gave, the tablet as well. You mm -hmm. gave a lot of you gave like three different ways of telling the player how they needed to solve the puzzle without ever telling them they needed to. In fact, during this entire time, Emma never says a word to you. She yep. doesn't even say congratulations. Mm -mm. 
You open a door with a liar. I would look at you and be like, congratulations. But no, <laughs> she is so bent on making sure the player figures out what they need to do. <laughs> I really wanted to create a scene that didn't have dialogue. It was good. It, it really does. It just, I don't know. I, this was uh, my favorite part. Of oh, just awesome. Thank you. Out. And when I played this first, I played this with the sound off. So I don't do that. Don't do that. But he, here's here's the one thing to defend it though. So this being a, a PC game or and or possibly a console game in the future, um, I think the expectation is that most players are going to play with the sound on. And so, like, sure, design wise, like there could be a little thing that's like, make sure your speakers are on, or like Emma could say like, man, that bird is really annoying. <laughs> like, you know, there could be like hints. But I I honestly don't think it it needs that. I, I feel like that would be too obvious. Um, yeah. So really, it's my own fault for multitasking and playing this with the sound off. You were actually saying something interesting about what kind of birds there are. Oh yeah, so I was telling these guys earlier that the the bird that's, well, I guess we're kind of have to, spoiler alert, oh. <laughs> on the puzzle. You know what, you, you, can, you can, we can like write it down below if you want, and then this spoilers section if has, they want to check yeah, it yeah. out. Well anyway, so... The bird is is singing the the different notes. Um, this scene in particular took a lot of playtesting to get right because it is based on uh, audio visual cues. Um, you'll find out if you're if anyone is watching as a designer that learning to communicate because that's what games are, right? We're communicating to your player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and learning to communicate properly. I mean, even if you notice like all the shots that I've created, like look at that shot right there. You can see the next tablet from that shot. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, all that is is. There is very little in this game that was not done. Anything was like done on purpose. Every, everything, everything was channel. incredibly yeah. conscious on you know why I did everything that I did. And that's called good level design, folks. <laughs> and level design is, is so tough, really tough to get right because you want it to be interesting, but you also want it to be fun to play through and uh, especially because it's it's every single corner of your game is yeah. going to involve level design. Like it's, it's a tedious and it's a very work intensive process and is very, so easy to just like forget to do something or leave it, yeah, something out or not realize something also, needed to be done. It's also one of those things that you don't realize that the level design is good until you compare it to bad level design. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And it's so easy to tell when something's poorly designed. Yeah. But anyway, we, we, sh we are, way over time on this okay you're gonna have fun editing this so um simple question of the day for y'all watching this is very simple i think what are you looking forward to in the next couple episodes of song of seven awesome. i mean you I mean chapters. chapters chapters i'm sorry I'm used because to this this episode. this is our last episode um of song of seven but we're still gonna have this guy back on he's requested to come back and hang yeah, out yeah this was us. super fun thank so. you i just want to say thank you for having me on <laughs> oh this was absolutely yeah, this was so much fun <laughs> but uh yeah <laughs> but uh yeah share your comments in the section below stay tuned for the next series and uh if you're a, a chicago developer and you want to be on the show too shoot us an email because this honestly this is exactly the kind of things that we would love to do on the show more often so yeah well, thank if you. you play the game and you follow me on Twitter, I'd love to hear comments and, you know, it's, uh, I'd always like to talk to other people who are interested in becoming developers. Um, Send him all of your bug reports, too. <laughs> <laughs> but first, but no, first, but seriously, I'm okay with that. But first, buy the game, because, I mean, if you're sending him bug reports without that, That's then true. you're just mean. <laughs> 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 Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye, y'all. Uh-uh.